Today you're going to hear the formula how you can get to 100,000 fast and why is that important? The first thing, it helps you in your mindset. Now think about this, if you have 100,000, you start to have the belief, correct, that you can get to a million dollars, that you can get to financial freedom. I've seen so many who are in their 30s who have been actually working for four or five years at least and simply do not have 100,000 in their bank account or their investment account. So what happens? They start to leave month to month. Income comes in, expense depletes everything else and there's really no financial future. I'm sure you don't want to be that guy or girl. The second is compounding. Is it better with more time or less time? More time, correct? Which means if you build your 100,000 fast, you have a lot more time to compound that money towards your retirement goals. So today I'm going to give you seven key methods and if you have been dreaming of reaching 100,000 by age 30 or building 100,000 in the next five years, this video is for you. Hi guys, welcome back. Now the first thing has to start with this, which is work ethic. Now work ethic to me is the foundation on how you can build your first 100,000 fast. Without it, everything else doesn't seem to stand, stand strong. But if we look at the equation, what exactly is work firstly? Work, in my opinion, is producing results. Work is not spending a lot of time at office. If we look in terms of a Grab driver, for example, a Grab driver we know spends a lot of time on the road, correct? There is waiting for customers, there's sending customers. And we also do know that Grab drivers spend a lot of time smoking, spend a lot of time having coffee breaks. Are these productive, productive things doing? Probably not, right? So if we look in terms of work ethic, work ethic means work producing results, ethic means consistently, producing results consistently. So for that Grab driver, he, should be, he or she should be looking at his own equation. How much or how many deliveries and rides am I doing a day with a specific time? Then you, you get the difference of things. It's not just spending time on the roads, it's effective how many completed rides with a specific time. So you know I'm in sales. And I can share, share a thing with you. When I go to office, I see some people, they come in really early. But when they do come in early, they, have, they, they start by their day by breakfast and watching a movie. Is that productive effort? Probably not, right? So if you've been working for a few years and you've not been building you know, a lot of work, a lot of income, you've got to look very carefully. Is the work ethic that you are doing right now needing significant tweaks? Because if you are doing results, you realize that very soon your income will increase. The second thing is to find an internship with a top employer. And why? Simply because if you have joined them as an internship before, it's very likely that you can get accepted for a starting position. Now, back in my time, the best internships were probably with management consulting firms, Boston Consulting, McKinsey Consulting. Apparently, the starting pay for these firms were about the highest we've heard across. You know, if you can get an investment banking, the starting pay is fantastic, etc. etc. But right now, it seems the best internship positions could also be in tech firms. Now this is a YouTube video and this lady over here, she's an SMU student and she's actually secured an internship with Shopee and she actually has a whole video on it. And how she did that was to really apply, take the initiative to apply to Shopee directly. And with that, she landed herself a position and understood how to contribute to the organization itself. In future, if Shopee wants to hire, she having an internship position there before definitely stands out. The third thing is that if your grades or your qualifications are not good, consider a sales position. You know, I'm in sales and I did my first 100K if I'm not at age 25 or 26. And the large part is because sales don't compensate you based on your grades or your relationship with your boss. It pays you based on your results. So if you have soft skills, you can communicate well, you're able to deliver marketplace, you know, what they want, then naturally you can do a lot of sales. There are a lot of areas of sales. You can be in IT sales, you can be in property sales. You all, you can need not be in financial sales like myself. So there are a lot of avenues, but the main thing is sales. It can pay you a variable that can give you a higher income level that is different from if you have stayed in a normal administrative role. So if you're thinking, I, I don't have very good grades and neither am I comfortable with facing people, then you should need to find a, a job or a side hustle that gives you a higher variable pay based on results. Again, it's based on results because if that variable pay gives you an extra boost, you find yourself receiving more income and you can build towards 100,000 faster.
The fourth thing is to actually start a business, but that's of course not for everybody. I have a key example for you to see and inspire you if you think you have the goods for it. This boy actually is not too old, if I'm not he's less than the age of 21. And he's been moving shoe sales very rapidly. He came out of the newspaper because he's been turning over as much as 30,000 a month in terms of shoes. He's been hunting for collectibles. It's a passion of his and he's able to market through social media, through influencers and get bids for his shoes at a markup price. So okay, if you want to find ways whereby you can increase your income or if you want to build income right now, then definitely these are some inspirational stories you can take note of. The fifth thing is to have your monies invested. Now, if you have $10,000, get it invested. If it delivers 5% return, so be it. You become 10,500, a small step in the right direction. Now, I have some advice for you. When it comes to investing, don't have excessive expectations on your investments because that puts you at risk, you know, making mistakes and being overly aggressive, chasing returns. You know, right now on YouTube, there are so many ideas, so many thumbnails that read 10 times your investment with buying this share, etc, etc. These ideas, be careful of them because they get you into trouble. They get you to be overly aggressive, especially if you are new to investing. In, in a lot of ways, your investment you know, belief should be you can deliver 5 to 10% return. If you can do that, compound that over time, you'll find yourself a very rich person down the years. The second part to note that I'd like to share with you is also, when it comes to investing, don't focus too much in logging into your account and looking at things. I have a few examples to show you. This is actually a question. How often have you logged into a trading account to check? Good and bad examples have surfaced. Someone has actually looked at least a couple of times a day and that's actually not productive because you can't actually move markets. You're just a participant, you don't control markets and if they go up and down, they affect you emotionally. So this is a better answer. I don't look at the markets too often, I'm looking long term. Check once in a while for opportunities and if they fit, then you invest. So that's something I'd like to share with you and hopefully it helps you become a better investor. The sixth thing is about using financial leverage and I hate to put this in, but it's also true. When you have financial leverage, you can amplify your returns. You can get to your 100,000 fast. There's this article previously. In April 2020 about this guy, and he actually used leverage three times. He used to borrow, do margins. Now on hindsight, it looks fantastic, right? He probably could have made a lot of money. But I would like to suggest to you, most of the time, margins, leverage, put you at pressure to get returns. Because at that point of time, you're, you're investing money, you can't risk losing. So my rule of thumb for you is, if you're new to investing, avoid leverage, avoid margin at all costs. No point looking at it. Allow yourself to make mistakes, small mistakes, so that you improve on your journey. Imagine this, you are a car driver, new driver, you have a triangle plate, correct, or a P plate. That is a reminder that you need to be cautious because ultimately, you don't have too much experience here and you don't want one accident to kill you. You want to get through the journey, make some mistakes and improve. And in future, when you're a savvy investor, then margin is actually your amplification to get to more returns. So take note of that. Now, if you have benefited, smash the like button so that more people can see valuable content like this. And also, if you want to join our private community, look for the join button below. Inside it, you'll find two tiers of membership. The first is I have private videos, but the second, which is something I want to touch a bit more on, is this portion where I'm trying to lead this project on financial literacy. So if you're keen, look for the video, I'll explain more there. So let's get to the final point, which is something very, very important. That's also a foundation. I kept it for the last, because if you stayed here, you deserve the best. This portion is about having a high savings rate. Now, if you haven't earned too much income, you'll be thinking it's all about income, but it's also not true. Many who are earning good income do not have a lot of savings. They have not reached their first 100,000. You can overtake them simply by having a high savings rate. If you're earning $2,000, you can save $1,500. That is great. You're building $1,500 each month. And having a high savings rate has a few things. Firstly, you need to have the right budgets. You need to look, look at your expenses. You need to be very diligent at keeping your costs low. The second is about lifestyle creep. Lifestyle creep affects people as their income increases. Imagine this, you have $2,000, you wear this shirt. When you have $12,000, you want to look better. You start to get tailored shirts, tailored suits, etc, etc. That adds on to your expenses. And very often, it's always peer pressure based, working culture based, a lot of ways. If you haven't heard too much about the topic, I've actually a previous video I've touched specifically on it. That is this video over here. How someone earning 19,000 facing lifestyle creep is now at financial distress. So you haven't seen the video inviting you there, 
that will help you understand your own financial journey a bit better and become more financially savvy. With that, I'll sign off. Take care and goodbye.